Although we generally associate technological advancements with the companies that successfully commercialize them, there are often underappreciated bodies toiling away behind the curtain. In many cases over the last 40 years, Xerox Palo Alto Research Center, today known as PARC, has been that hidden player, inventing many of today's ubiquitous technologies or refining them from abstract concepts. Launched as a development arm of Xerox Corporation in 1970, PARC has played an instrumental role in the engineering of laser printing and many of the technologies that compose the personal computer. Most famously, the graphical user interface, or GUI, used in the Xerox 8010 Star Information System in 1981, followed by the Apple Lisa. The team included many of the world's top computer scientists, not least of which were former employees of the Stanford Research Institute. Despite its vast industry contributions, the group has been criticized for failing to capitalize on many innovations. While some of you older folks might be familiar with the prolific Palo Alto Research Center, we think its accomplishments have largely escaped the younger tech crowd. This is David with TechSpot and let's give credit where credit's due. Xerox Park, a nod to the minds. Behind the GUI, Ethernet, laser printing, and more. Ethernet and Internetworking the networking platform that ships with virtually every modern computer was born at PARC around 1973 with Robert Metcalf and three of his colleagues credited as inventors. An early experimental version of Ethernet ran at 2.94 megabits per second and was outlined in a 1976 paper co-authored by Metcalf called Ethernet, Distributed Packet Switching for Local Computer Networks. In 1979, Metcalf convinced Xerox Intel and Digital Equipment Corporation to promote 10 megabit per second Ethernet through the DIC standard. Early Ethernet used coaxial cables, but they were eventually ditched in favor of twisted pair and fiber optic cables. Countless other networking related advancements unfolded during the creation and improvement of Ethernet, including the Park Universal Packet or PUP, an internetworking protocol suite that influenced the early work of TCP IP and served as the cornerstone of Xerox's later XNS protocols. Moreover, PUP was a core component of PARC's prophetic Office of the Future concept. Ball and Optical Mouse It's debatable who developed the first mouse, but it wasn't PARC. Yeah, yeah, that's supposed to be the theme of this video, but keep watching. A mouse-like bowling ball contraption was created as a secret military project in 1952. While Stanford's Douglas Engelbart independently produced a wheel mouse in the early 60s. Only weeks before Engelbart planned to demonstrate his device in 1968, the German company Telefunken revealed a ball mouse, though it barely resembles modern designs. Bill English, who assisted Engelbart with his original concept, later built the auto ball mouse we're more familiar with while working for Xerox Park in 1972. Its rectangular shape, button placement, and top protruding wire set the standard we still follow today. The device was created for Park's early auto machine which was arguably the first modern personal computer with a mouse-driven GUI, but it never hit the retail market. Park's Richard Lyon went on to build the first optical mouse in 1981. GUI and WYSIWYG Having a point-and-click interface is useless if you can't, well, point-and-click. Park had to pioneer much of the graphical environment we take for granted, all the way down to coining the desktop metaphor. The group's early GUI featured icons, pop-up menus, checkboxes, and overlapping windows controlled with the mouse. That opened the door for some innovative software, including many of the first What You See Is What You Get or WYSIWYG applications, a luxury in those days to say the least. Among those new applications was Bravo, the first WYSIWYG word processor, which laid the foundation for Microsoft Word. Park also developed the first WYSIWYG integrated circuit editor, the SIL vector graphics editor, the Markup Bitmap Editor, which is a paint program, as well as programming languages like Interlisp, Interpress, and Smalltalk, the latter of which influenced C++, Objective-C, CLOS, Java, and more. By the late 70s, Park invented linguistic technologies for spell checking and created one of the first network multiplayer games, Autotrek. The first laser printer. Invented by Gary Starkweather at Xerox's Webster Research Center in 1969, the first laser printer prototype was fabricated by modifying a xerographic copier. 
Although it was technically birthed just ahead of Park's founding, Starkweather collaborated with the Palo Alto team over the following couple years to refine his original design. The first commercial unit was introduced in 1975, the IBM 3800. But it wasn't until 1981 that the market received its first office-bound laser printer, the $17,000 Xerox Star 8010. HP's 71-pound laser jet hit the mainstream market in 1984 and printed at a whopping 300 dpi or 8 pages per minute. It was quickly followed by competing devices from Brother, IBM, Apple, and others. But even the early consumer implementations were incredibly expensive by modern standards. The LaserJet sold for $3,500, equal to roughly $8,500 today. Laser printing grew into a multi-billion dollar business for Xerox, easily funding all of its other projects. The Personal Computer Many of the aforementioned technologies were present in Park's experimental auto computer, but that system wasn't meant for prime time, and was used mostly internally through the 70s. The auto was greatly refined and commercialized in 1981 when Xerox shipped its first office workstation, known as the Xerox Star or the Xerox 8010 information system. Intended to realize Xerox's Office of the Future vision, it was marketed as part of a complete personal office system that included other workstations and file and print servers. The Star itself sold for $16,000, but Xerox's full office setup cost more than $50,000. Not only was it expensive, but it was an entirely closed system, which meant all the hardware and software had to be built by Xerox. Only about 25,000 units were sold, and many considered the Xerox Star a commercial failure. Others argue that it was simply ahead of its time. A few years later, Apple launched the Macintosh, which borrowed many concepts from Park and is considered the first commercially successful GUI and mouse-equipped PC. Thinking Beyond the PC Not only was Xerox Palo Alto Group ahead of the curve with personal computers, but it envisioned an era beyond the traditional PC nearly 30 years ago. Park coined the term ubiquitous computing in 1988 to outline a future where technology would recede into the background of our lives and people would use mobile devices to seamlessly access resources and control environments. Sound familiar? Park developed some of the earliest functional examples of the pads and tabs that flood today's computing scene. The Park Tab prototype was built in 1991. It measured 9 by 11 by 1 inches, weighed 5 pounds, had a Motorola processor, 4 megabytes of RAM, a pen interface, and a keyboard and an integrated mic. It also had near-field communication tech, aka NFC, which is widely used today. A similar device called the Park Tab was a palm-sized computer that allowed researchers to access the internet, read their email, check their weather, and many other basic handset functions. Further back, Park's Alan Kay described the Dynabook in 1972. Other Advancements With so many bright minds exploring seemingly every facet of computing, there's no way we can list all their achievements. Along with everything mentioned before, the group also created or greatly contributed to amorphous silicon, high-powered laser tech, the computer worm, non-erasable magneto-optical storage technologies, a 16-bit coding system that led to the ISO IEC 10646 and the Unicode standard, Lambda Mu, one of the oldest standing real-time multi-user web environments, and the IPv6 and HTTP NG protocols that govern and define how the internet works. Xerox Park Today Although Park may never become a household name, there's no denying that it's been a driving force in the computing industry for decades. When it was originally established, the research body was tasked with designing an office of the future. By all accounts, it accomplished that mission and more. The division was spun off in 2002 but remains an independent subsidiary of Xerox. Many former Park employees have formed their own companies, including Adobe, 3Com, which was bought by HP in 2010, and Spectra Diode. Also, three of its eminent researchers are Turing Award winners, the Nobel Prize of Computing. Park continues to tinker with bleeding-edge technology from artificial intelligence and human-machine collaboration to Internet of Things, digital manufacturing, and the digital workplace. Thank you for watching this list of significant accomplishments by Xerox Park. If you want to see more videos like this, this is YouTube. 
hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when new videos drop. For more tech news, gaming, and analysis, head on over to techspot.com.